Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Nova, the free parallel dynamic EQ plugin from Tokyo Dawn Labs, and its bigger brother, Nova Gentleman's Edition. Nova is a powerful tool with many different applications. You can use it as a sweet sounding parallel equalizer, or as a full band compressor. Use it as a dynamic EQ to compress just part of the spectrum or expand it if you're using the Gentleman's Edition. You can use multiple bands to create super transparent multi-band compression type settings or to subtract parts of the spectrum from the W band to exclude them from the full band compressor and create unusual frequency dependent compression settings. Let's start by looking at the equalizer. This is easy and intuitive to use, allowing you to drag nodes around on a graph and set the cue with your mouse wheel. Clicking a node will select that band and display its parameters below. And each band can be switched to a low or high shelf if required. Four EQ bands are provided in the free version, plus a pair of low and high pass filters with a choice of four slope settings ranging from a very gentle 6 dB per octave up to a super surgical 72 dB per octave. Users of the Gentleman's Edition gain an extra two EQ bands for a total of six, plus some extra filter slope settings, including a useful 18 dB per octave setting, and even more surgical 96 and 120 dB per octave slopes at the upper end. Both plugs allow you to drag to select multiple bands in the graph and adjust them all in one go. And both provide an optional real-time analyzer to show the spectrum of the input, output, or sidechain signals. Both plugs also provide the handy order by frequency button, which lights up if you drag a band past its neighbor. Press the button to renumber all bands with the lowest frequency first. Unlike most other EQ plugins, however, Nova's EQ uses a parallel algorithm. So the high shelving settings are achieved by adding or subtracting a parallel chain with a high pass filter, while bell shaped filters are created by adding or subtracting a parallel band pass filter. We can solo the selected band and listen to just the parallel signal by holding the control and shift keys in Windows or command and shift on a Mac. This also works when multiple bands are selected. Clicking in blank space on the graph, or to the left or right of the band select button, will deselect all EQ bands, and we now see the wide band displayed below. As we can see from the diagram to the left, the wide band is the full range input signal, to which we can add up to four parallel filtered bands in the free standard edition, and up to six in the gentleman's edition. Parallel EQ is quite different in character compared to more conventional serial EQ designs, particularly in the way that adjacent bands interact with one another. And it can be very useful for transparent, sweet sounding mastering settings. Nova's EQ section also features automatic gain compensation, so boosting a frequency will result in an overall drop in gain to try to keep the loudness the same. This can help to make EQ decisions easier, as you're less likely to be fooled by a change in volume. But you can turn it off with the EQ gain button if you prefer. OK, let's select the wide band again, and activate the dynamics for the band by turning on the threshold button. And let's turn down the threshold so we start to compress the signal peaks, indicated by the circular meter around the knob. The threshold is also represented by the horizontal blue line on the graph. So if the analyzer is turned on, you can see which parts of the spectrum are hitting the threshold and triggering compression. The ratio knob controls compression ratio, up to a maximum of 10 to 1. Nova uses RMS detection, so it keys from average levels rather than signal peaks. The threshold has a gentle soft knee, so compression is applied gradually as the signal approaches the threshold, rather than suddenly as soon as it arrives. And the gain reduction also has a soft 12 dB range limit. 
the resulting compression can be very transparent, even with higher ratios. The two fields to the right allow us to adjust attack time, to control how Nova responds to fast transients, and release time to control the gluing effect of the compression. If you're using the Gentleman's Edition, you also have the option to disable auto-release, which can sometimes result in a stronger gluing effect. With auto-release turned on, results will tend to be more transparent. And the standard version of Nova has auto-release enabled, with no option to turn it off. Gain reduction in both versions is displayed by the vertical bouncing of the yellow EQ curve on the graph and by the meter around the gain knob in the wideband control panel. Don't be tempted to apply makeup gain with this knob, however. This controls the level of everything not covered by an EQ band, so adjusting it will change the overall EQ shape. This can be useful, and I'll come back to this knob later. Meanwhile, for normal makeup gain, leave the wideband gain at Unity, and turn up the out gain knob to the right instead. If I now turn on GR Delta mode above, we can listen to just those parts of the signal that are affected by the dynamics processor. This configuration is equivalent to running a full band compressor followed by an EQ, and might be all you need when mastering a decent mix. The bypass button allows us to compare with the unprocessed signal, bypassing both compression and EQ in one go. Users of the Gentleman's Edition benefit from a couple of extra features here. The Equal Loudness Trim button at the bottom right will automatically adjust the output gain to match the loudness of the input signal. But even if you choose not to use it, the Equal Loudness Bypass in this version automatically adjusts the volume of the unprocessed signal to match that of the processed signal. So you're not fooled by volume changes when comparing, yet you still retain full manual control of your output gain. Of course, Nova is capable of more than just full band compression and static EQ. Let's disable the W band compression and select the high shelving band instead. Again, we see a set of dynamics controls. I'll enable them and turn down the threshold knob again. And this time, the blue line on the graph curves down towards the high frequencies to show that the threshold is now lower for that region. When the threshold is low enough, we see the EQ curve start to dance as the high frequencies are reduced in level whenever they exceed the threshold. Or even just come close to the threshold due to the soft knee design. And so we're now compressing just the high frequencies. This is a little like using just the high frequency band of a multi-band compressor, with the EQ gain equivalent to the band's makeup gain. And it can add the same kind of glossy sheen to a mix. However, unlike traditional multiband compression, the signal doesn't run through any crossover filters, and the sound is extremely transparent as a result. Again, we can enable the GR Delta option to listen to just the dynamic changes. And it's easy to hear that this time only the high frequencies are being compressed. This kind of dynamic EQ has many possible applications. A bell-shaped EQ filter set at around 8 kHz can create a narrow band DS and reduce sibilance. Or you could compress the low mid-range to reduce boxiness or muddiness. Or you could compress just the low frequencies with a low shelf setting and create a deep, solid low end for the mix. Users of the Gentleman's Edition also have the option to turn the ratio down below one and apply upwards expansion instead of compression. The gain is now increased when the signal exceeds the threshold, so increasing the dynamic range. This can be a great way to add extra punch to the kick drum, or extra snap and sizzle for the hi-hats and snare with a high shelving setting, and can sometimes help to recover the lost transients in material that was previously compressed too hard. Expansion can also be an effective way to reduce low-mid congestion. A gentle EQ cut in the low-mids can clear out space in less dynamic elements such as guitars or synths. 
while some upwards expansion restores the low end punch for more dynamic elements such as snare drums and toms. Setting multiple EQ bands to cover the whole spectrum can create crossover free multiband compression, where each band of frequencies is compressed or expanded individually. Starting point presets are provided for up to four bands of compression in the standard edition, or up to six bands of compression or expansion in the gentleman's edition. Of course, more bands is not necessarily better when it comes to multiband compression. More bands means you're more likely to inadvertently change the mix balance with your processing. And will also reduce the glue effect that comes from different elements of the mix modulating each other via the bus compressor. A three band setup can often provide a good compromise. A dynamic low shelving band can take care of the low frequencies, while a high shelving band looks after the high end. And rather than enable another EQ band for the mid-range, and instead set up some W-band compression to compress everything not covered by a dynamic EQ band and apply the mid-range glue. The W-band gain knob is now equivalent to the makeup gain for just the mid-range band. For extra gluey settings, try setting very low and gentle Q values for the two EQ bands to allow a bit more interaction between parts in adjacent bands. You may also want to turn off the split modes for the two EQ bands. With split mode off, the attack and release times will be the same as the W band, as will the ratio setting. So all three bands will share the same compression settings apart from the threshold. Of course, you could also mix and match and turn on split mode for some bands while leaving others to share settings with the W band. We've already covered a vast array of possible ways to use this plugin. However, I'll finish off with one more. Rather than enabling the dynamics for a band to compress or expand that band, we can optionally approach it from the other direction and enable dynamics for a band to exclude it from the W band compression. Let's start with all EQ bands turned off and dial in some full band compression from the W band. If I enable a high shelf, but leave the gain at unity, Nothing immediately changes. If I then turn on the dynamics section, however, the high frequencies are now excluded from the W band compression. And as the threshold is still turned all the way up, the band's own dynamic processing is not triggered and the high frequencies remain static. We could do the same thing with the low frequencies to exclude a kick drum or bass part from compression. or for mid-frequencies, perhaps to exclude the vocals. Of course, setting the ratio to 1 to 1 for the band will also have the same effect. In which case, it won't matter what the threshold is set to. There is a more elegant option, however. Holding Alt and clicking the threshold button will enable sticky mode, which has the same effect, but with the band's dynamics disabled for slightly lower CPU use. We're now compressing everything except those frequencies we excluded with sticky band. And the W band gain will have a profound effect on the result. When set to unity, the rest of the mix will be pushed backwards by the compression, which can help to focus your attention on those sticky regions we excluded. Turning the W band gain up, however, will add makeup gain to the rest of the mix, making these elements relatively denser and louder while leaving the sticky bands unaffected. So this might have the opposite effect, focusing attention on the bits between the bands and pushing the unprocessed sticky regions further into the background. As you might expect from such a powerful tool, Nova's CPU use will be greater than a conventional static EQ plug. Switching to eco mode at the top will reduce the CPU load if needed, while still providing very respectable audio quality. If you're using the Gentleman's Edition and you have processor cycles to spare, you may want to go the other way and enable the Insane mode instead. Insane refers to the resulting audio bandwidth, by the way, rather than the processor use, which will only increase by about 50% compared to precise mode. The Gentleman's Edition also provides two more modes. The linear versions of the precise and insane modes at the bottom are the same, 
but without the subtle saturation that's added in the normal version. Eco mode is already saturation free in both versions of the plug. That's all I have time for in this video. If you need more information, you can open the user manual via the About box. Or you can enable Dynamic Help mode to display a pop-up help hint for each control you hover over with your mouse cursor. Thanks for watching.